Hi everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Abdi for ASR 3D and Motion Graphics and today I would like to show you how we can create an animation like this which is a cloud simulation done with TIEFLOW in 3ds Max and attached to some animated objects moving along a path. So let me just jump into 3ds Max and start creating this. Here, the first thing we need is a rectangle. So let me just go and create something like this. Set that to a hundred and a hundred and fifty. And I'm going to bring it right to my center. There we go. Now I need edit spline modifier. I'm gonna delete this part, select this first vertex and make it first. Select these two and set the fillet maybe to something like 20. And now we go and select the entire path and set the outline to one centimeters. So zoom in, select this edge and this edge delete them and I'm gonna select the outer path here detach this and call it curtain and the one that I have here I'm gonna call this railing so the inner path is going to be my railing and the outer path is the curtain itself and let me bring them up to 200 or something so above the ground now i'm going to select my curtain path the outer one add extrude modifier to it and set that to minus 200 or something that's too long minus 180 Turn on the wireframes and give it some segments and just take a look at the size of the polygons here and make sure that they are evenly distributed so they have all the same sizes. That looks good so far. Now I'm going to add an edit poly modifier to this. Select all these edges. Go to connect and here we're going to connect them and make sure that we have the same size as these guys so click OK and select this guy go to ring connect and again make sure the size is evenly distributed something like this so that looks good now in order to have a good looking cloud simulation we need a denser mesh than this and we're gonna increase the density by using tessellate and set it to polygon and set the tension to zero and bring the iterations to two so that should be actually enough for our simulation so let me turn that off the next thing I need is a cylinder. I'm going to go and switch the front view, draw my cylinder, give it a radius of 1.5 and the height of 1 centimeters. We don't need height segments, but the cap segments, we're going to set that to 3. So this is going to be our button. And I'm going to add an array modifier to this one. Change the distribution to spline. And go and pick my railing as my spline. So it will distribute them along that path. The orientation is now wrong a bit. So we're going to bring it to minus 90 degrees. The local rotation. And set the amount of maybe up to... 
18 or something. So now we're going to animate this and just click on auto and set a key, move your CTI to 125 or something and set the strength here to 20%. So just make sure they're not touching each other and 20% looks good. And now this is our animation that we have. So I don't want it to start right away. I want to give it a little bit time, especially for the cloud simulation. So the cloud will just settle a bit and then start the animation. So let me move that back now for 25 frames. So I have the same length. OK, so let me bring back the curtain. And now we can go and create a tie flow simulation. So add tie flow to my scene, go to the settings, time step right away, set that to 1 12th. Maybe we have to change it, but for now, that should be good enough. Open the editor, let me make that a little bit smaller. And we're going to start with birth objects, pick our curtain as our object here. Then the next thing is cloth bind that we need. So that turns it to the cloth mesh, if you wish. Let me turn that off and also turn off my wireframe here. Then we're going to drag it out and select surface test. And for the surface test object, we go and pick the buttons. Let me change this to red or something. Now the distance is too high. I'm going to set the surface test distance here to one centimeters. So everything which is in range of one centimeters close to these buttons will get sent to this event. And here in this event, we're going to go and deactivate those particles and bind them using object bind. We're going to bind them to the buttons here. Click on lock to surface. So this is actually it for the binding and stuff. The next thing is force. So I'm going to drag it into first event. Set the strength to minus 0.3. And this is actually all we need for now. Well, when the simulation starts, all the clothes stuff will go and squeeze together because they are now attached to these buttons. And we have the set at the surface test here set to one centimeters. That means all of these orange, let me change that maybe to something bluish or something. All of these blue now vertices that are in range of one centimeters close to that thing will go and stitch to that or bind, get bind to, to this object. And we don't want this. We want them to bind that thing just for the first one of two frames so change the time into frame and set it set the range from zero to one so it will just affect the vertices or the binding for the first two frames and afterwards nothing will get bind to these buttons so let me just go and run the simulation and see what that looks like so far That works so far, but there is a problem with the collision now. So you see in this part, 
they are intersecting, so they are going into each other. And I'm going to solve this using the CUDA collision solver, which is available in the Pro version. If you don't have the Pro version, I also have a tutorial where I explain everything about cloud simulations without using CUDA and using particle physics instead. So feel free to watch this tutorial if you don't use the pro version of Typhlow. But for this example, I'm going to use CUDA, which makes the stuff much easier to deal with. And the results are really accurate. So it's really nice to have that feature. So now let me bring down the friction to 0.05. So we don't need it that high and run the simulation again and see what we get this time. There we go. Now the animation or simulation is done and it worked pretty well. So let me just run it. That's what we get. Moves really slowly and then speeds up and collides really nicely. The results are pretty cool. Now the only thing I would change here is just the speed at the end. So it is just moving too long and a um, bit too wild still. So we can slow it down using the slow operator here. I'm going to drag it out to the first event and set the velocity to 9%. So it will slow it down 9%. That should give us a better result at the end than what we have right now. And uh, let me run that again and see how that works. So there we go. Now that is done and the slow operator helped a lot to calm down the wild motion at the end. So now it moves and slows really down it looks much better than before. There we go. So, next thing we can do is add some thickness to our cloth if you want to. You don't have to, but if you wish, you can go down and add shell to your surface. We don't need that for the in uh, for the outer amount so just the inner one is the one i'm gonna select and set that to maybe 0.1 that's okay and that gives me uh, gets rid of the of the black areas in the back and so on so it gives me a double-sided cloth so let me turn this off and from here, you can take it to the next level. So you can actually animate these buttons back again and run your simulation from there, the thing that I did in my demo. Or then texture it. You can also hide these buttons. You don't have to see them. And then go and create your railing or whatever those curtains should be attached to. And this is all for this tutorial. I hope this is helpful and useful to you guys. And we'll see you soon in the next one. Have a good day and bye-bye.